Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Christo and this is the Best of Both Worlds campaign. Thank you for joining me. We're trying to do a push into France. It's a little tough. There's a lot of them. <laughs> and if we push any further, we're pushing into core French territory, which is always nice. But this is an opportunity to learn. France. There are actually there's one French division here. I want France to attack me from their territory. It's just the US doing most of the attacking. The US, with their stupendous number of factories, their very large number of planes. How many divisions do you have, US? Let's have a look. 230 to 400, about 300 divisions. Well, we, we do outnumber the US. It's unfortunate that we're not just fighting the US. <laughs> so, oh no. Romanian destroyers going down in the Black Sea. Outrageous. Um, yes. So there's conflicted opinion <laughs> in the comments on this series. Some people think it's brilliant that it's all, you know, stagnant and tough and this is exactly what they like. And some people think it's, uh, it's too slow and I should just hurry up and win. Or um, they don't really, well, I don't know. The, the people that think it's too slow don't seem to say hurry up and win. They just, just, just say hurry up. I don't know. But, uh, don't worry. Those of you that enjoy slong, loads, <laughs> slong. That is, that's the word. Yes. Slow, more methodical play. There's no possibility of us speeding this up, because if we did, we would lose. <laughs> it's quite simple, really. All right, so we're dealing with a naval invasion here. And looks like we're just about to begin absolutely crushing it, because the men have deployed. What we should do to repel naval invasions in the core region, one thing you can do is have a, a big front line, a big fallback line deployed throughout your army, throughout your area, just to uh, be ready for new people to deploy against you. We will do that in Africa, but in Europe, what we can probably do is just not deploy lots of troops. So we can have some 40 wits, for example. A full army of 40 wits sitting in reserve, and then not deploy them, basically, ever. Uh, and the way you can make that less annoying, in terms of it not saying you have troops ready to deploy, I'm saying this like it's an established strategy, but I've never thought of this before. We should duplicate this division. These are the uh, 40 infantry port defenders. And then we'll add in some tanks we're not making, like heavy tanks. There you go. It's going to cost a little bit of army experience. And then if we put some of these training... Oh no, missing equipment production. You don't have any heavy tanks. And then, do we have any heavy tanks in storage? No, we don't. So these guys are going to train to, like, 98%. Yep, 98%. And then no further. Uh, so they're almost all the way trained up. And then if we get a bad invasion in this region, you know, somewhere, somewhere we're able to actually deploy, which is that area, which is land that you own as a state rather than as an occupied state, which has a land connection to your capital, in case you're wondering. Um, or maybe a land connection to your cause... I think you... Mm, I think it's your capital. Anyway. Um, and we can deploy them instantly in any area there. Which I think will be useful. I can name this. Generic deployment name. This is uh, this is the Oh Crap Army. <laughs> which we deploy if a big American invasion makes us say Oh Crap. Okay. So we're fighting for supremacy over the Benelux. And people are saying you'll never get supremacy over the Benelux. And this is true. Um, but not very significantly true, because the objective at the moment is not to gain air superiority over the Benelux. The objective is to try and give ourselves at least yellow air in which to fight. Um, one option that I've been considering is we could do a bit of encircling here, kill, some, kill a few of their divisions, and then reinforce the border and put really good forts on it. So good that they actually can't break through. Uh, and then, what is going on down here? <laughs> the Maginot is undefended. Thing is, even if we busted through the Maginot here, it wouldn't enable a proper war of movement or anything, because we've got all these forests and rivers and things to move across before we got in here. And by the time we got here, they'd have moved troops south and bogged us down, and all we'd have to do is reassign troops down here. That's probably not a good idea. But yeah, so we could, we could try and build an actual sturdy defense on this side, and then kill the Soviet Union. And I'm very tempted to do that. So I think if this push doesn't come to fruition, and obviously we can get lots of kills without it actually 
succeeding in totally bringing down the Allies, and that's still good. But if this doesn't result in a French capitulation, I think we will uh, fall back a bit to a defensive line, um, which we will begin preparing now, maybe? Or where are we building infrastructure? Right, down here. Yeah, we're just kicking out an invasion down here. I thought it was American, but I actually saw a Belgian division there a second ago, so I think these guys are probably going to be able to handle it. No, oh, no, do not give a garrison order. Let's redeploy some of them down there. So, some more puppet divisions. Always good. To be thrown on uh, borders. Good points made in the comments, continuing the theme. We should definitely not declare war on Iran before we declare war on... Sorry, on Iraq before we declare war on Saudi, if we're choosing one of the two to go after. It's much less oil in Saudi Arabia, but it would be useful for getting to some of this oil. Yemen, you're... No, Yemen's not under... Oh, oh I guess this is currently... Is Yemen right now? In real life, I mean. I think this is Yemen. Do you have any core? Yeah. Um, we can get access to this area with by going into Saudi Arabia. And by capturing this area from Saudi Arabia, we'll put ourselves in a good position to seize this port immediately, preventing any allied reinforcements into Iraq. And we also, when we go to war with Iraq, need to remember that we're going to have to do a kind of blitzkrieg cross here in order to cut off the Soviets and stop them creating a larger front with us. Our, uh, our Turkish allies are doing sterling work holding back the Soviets here, by the way. I'm very impressed. For now, we'll just overstack uh, port defences in the region, because we will need more port defence once we take this region. Someone said, why aren't you attacking uh, Egypt, by the way? Why aren't we taking more of this land? Because there's no factories and no resources, and it, there's no point. <laughs> there's a bit more manpower, but we don't get much manpower from core states. We don't have the special advisor that gives 2% more non-core manpower. So we get very, very little manpower from non-core states, so there's not much point. Another awesome tip. We should deploy ships to the Atlantic. We've created an Axis Lake. Uh, they can only move submarines in and out. And uh, they can't move anything in and out on the Suez. Um, so we could probably do naval invasions in in the Med if we wanted. We could take Gibraltar and then they couldn't even do... Uh, wait, if it's enemy? Okay, even if it's enemy, they can still get subs through. Um, but we could take Gibraltar, which would be, you know, fun. <laughs> it would also maybe put us in range to... We could probably already do a naval invasion of uh, Portugal, but I don't really dare test myself against the enemy navies, because the US Navy, remember, is probably around somewhere with all their carriers. They've already finished off the Japanese. They actually haven't. <laughs> the northern part of Okinawa is still being defended. As is, as is Saipan, I guess is how you'd pronounce that. Cool. All right, well, without further ado, let's see what we can do over here. Push these guys back. Good lord, the French defense is unstoppable. Not unstoppable, that's an exaggeration, but, but it's freaking good. Right, I'm getting in here, that's excellent. We can then go carry that on down into here. We'll be in a great spot to uh, get you here. No, you two, I need to go there, please. Thank you. You guys pin those infantry so they don't go anywhere. You guys to join in. In fact, one of you should join in on this one. Excellent. I think we're going to break them there. Yeah, nice, definitely. Excellent. Look at that. Breakthrough way higher than their soft attack. Higher than needed, really. Given that uh, breakthrough like defense is not useful once it exceeds your enemy's attack. There we go. Nice. Broke them there. A few more pocketed. Give me a little bit of a suicidal blocking attack, please. You can stop now. Good to do. In case it's not clear, by the way, what I mean when I say a blocking attack, because I, I, I bring that up a lot. Sorry, I think the volume on these sound effects is a bit loud. Let me turn that down a bit. So, the what I mean by a blocking attack is these guys were trying to move to here. So we attack them from these directions so that even if they were to complete their move progress from this tile here to this tile here. They wouldn't actually finish the move. It's one of the very important things to learn to do if you're trying to become good at, at Hoi. You need to be able to prevent your enemy moving the way they want to. It can be quite expensive in terms of lives because when you attack that way you're often attacking with troops that you don't really intend to win the battle, which means the battle will go poorly 
which means you often uh, take quite heavy casualties. Let's just qu quickly close this pocket. I'll use some tanks into this bit and then take them here when we can. You guys are... Yeah, right. Our infantry are just simply not good enough to, uh, to actually push. But we have the manpower that I don't mind throwing a few of our infantry's lives away right now. Um, just, to, just to hold them back a bit. Where's the next pocket potential? Pocket potential sounds kind of like a... <laughs> I don't know. Either, either a porno or a... Some kind of new... I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> moving swiftly on. We are going to charge in to these guys from the west. Bad supply. Down here. Yeah, fair enough. You guys. Head this way. Just... Just... Uh, it. <laughs> it's it's Bulgarian Bulgarians. It's Belgians. Not much big of a problem. Then you zoom in a bit. Apparently, there's a bunch of U.S. troops there as well. That's okay. We strat redeployed in, and we're still managing to win the defense. So that's pretty good. Decisions available. War propaganda against the United States. Why is that cheaper than the others? Because they're a major. Yeah, because they're a major. No, thank you. We don't need war propaganda. We need stability, if anything. What's wrong with our stability right now? Being at war. Fair enough. Um unlikely to really raise that. We could do war bonds. Should get us quite a lot of consumer good factories. Um, could develop some oil fields, but I really... I don't know. I'm not sure it's worth it. Considering political power is so limited. We could, with our political power, buy... I think we just established none of these are useful. Well, I mean, the fortification engineer could be a good, good one if we wanted to Really militarize the French border. A all-weather expert would be pretty nice, actually. As would have decided, yeah, we got so much political power that we need to uh, spend. We're absolutely not going to... Uh, all you infantry, you just... I uh, can't do it that way. Um, so many advisors we want to get, I'm not going to spend political power on anything else. There's still some tanks coming in here, but we're just restarting that attack so that the tanks are the ones on the front line here. Bad supply in this region. Taking these two tiles should solve that. Don't attack in fruitlessly, please. Okay. Where, so where? Oh, good. The Indonesian order sent us three divisions. How can they possibly stand against us now? We'll leave behind a couple of divisions on the port. Drive these Americans from their lands. How many of them are there? About a uh, good hundred thousand there. The other option on this front, and it's one I'm sorely tempted by, is to do what I said I wouldn't do, I think, in one of the previous episodes. Which, oh, Soviet attack has ceased. Okay. Let's bring the planes out of the sky. We'll have a couple of planes flying air superiority. Okay. But we need to keep an eye on these alerts. I'm so bad at registering what these alerts are telling me, but... They have air superiority over Egypt. That's fine. Um, and they have air superiority over the Benelux. So they also have it over Asia Minor. We should probably... Yeah, oh, for God's sake. Stop fighting them in the air. And stop with that resupply. Um, you guys, just go somewhere central so I can put you wherever I need you. We'll just try and intercept some Turkish bombers. Some Turkish bombers. Some Soviet bombers over Turkey. Oh yeah, that Turkish line is, is buckling. If they reach this, I think we'd be in a spot of bother. But I should be able to bring... Um, I should be able to bring these guys over, maybe, once we're, uh, once we're done down here. They don't appear to be defending this tile. Are you guys... Ah, they're probably trying to exit via the port. Let's put some pressure on them. We don't want them to be able to uh, just leave without taking some casualties. These uh, Italian tanks, obviously, not excellent, but yeah, doing some work. Okay, there we go, good. Taking them out here. Yeah, so what I, what I, did I complete my sentence? I'm not sure I did. What we could do that I said I wasn't going to do down here is fall back in circle, fall back in circle, fall back in circle. And uh, I'm sorely tempted because the, the allied numbers are just so powerful. Um, it, it did so well on the Soviet front at taking some of the pressure off. Okay, there we go. As soon as we take the planes out of this sky... 
they immediately start attacking us again. Well, we kind of want them to attack us, to bleed their manpower and equipment. Um, every day they're not attacking us is a day where they get stronger, probably by a, a greater degree than we do, given their better resources and better production. Although, of course, they might be making, you know, silly things, like not, a, you know, silly uh, quantities of different materials and things like that. So, I'm very conflicted about what to do here. If we can hold this tile, fall back quite far, like to the river, and then drive in here to Ghent, we cut off these areas here. And this is nice play, this is what you want to drive through. Though, of course, the counter-offensives would be, would be damaging. But we, suffic we sufficiently, we successfully held back the advance here. I think maybe we we build forts and we fall back a little, and then we try and crush the Soviets. I think, I think that is what we do. It was a good encirclement. The offensive went well. It cost us a lot of planes, which I would love to be able to take out of the sky. We're now uh, in a fairly se serious fighter deficit and not producing very many because we diverted production and our resource situation is apparently horrendously devastating all of a sudden. What's going on? Why is the top line not got enough steel in it? Yeah, that, wasn't, that didn't sound right. I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> um, and obviously we killed our... Uh, fighter efficiency because we decided it was so imperative that we build some flak, which I think was probably in the long run a good choice even if it's gonna cost us in the skies because we just weren't managing it so something we can do immediately with what flak we have already produced it shouldn't be much, 400 is we could throw it into our medium tank divisions as a support company so for example, this support artillery it's doing very little 40, uh, 21 soft attack. It's not really the kind of thing you're looking for. Adding in a little bit of air attack seems seems good. Also increasing the hard attack a bit. Slightly decreases defense and breakthrough. That's fine. That's not what. But the breakthrough is already ludicrously high and the defense is not what the tanks are for. Lowers the supply usage a bit, which is nice. Can we afford to do this for all of our, mod uh, our medium tanks? We can indeed. Let's do that. And we will... Also, at some point, want to add it in to our 40 widths. Um, we will also need to research better anti-air, of course. Our anti-air is really, really bad right now. Um, so we're going to go over supply massively if we move in here because the infrastructure is at zero. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, we don't need all of these tanks here. So let's <clears throat> move back a tile. It's just such bad land to defend is the problem. I do not want to defend planes tiles. Especially not a planes tile that can be attacked from three directions. Mm. But, I mean, with the extended Maginot line behind them and the French getting their crazy bonus. Let me just show you that, by the way. So these French divisions get uh, country plus 48.6%. That is crazy good. And makes them extremely difficult to break through. Um, there is an encirclement potential right now, just here. If we could break them here and here, and here, 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 we could encircle quite a lot of American divisions just there. So let's try and do that. Uh, bring forward the tanks. I'm really looking forward to. Uh, man the guns for another reason, which is that the the fuel, the addition of fuel to the game is going to make this kind of oil, massive oil deficit much, much more devastating than we've experienced it as in this campaign. Um, in this campaign, we're kind of getting by, right? Even though we have not close to enough fuel. My impression is, and I don't have any special information about this, but my impression is in man the guns, if we had this little fuel, uh, you know, our tanks would almost just stop moving. We would have such a devastating shortage that it would mean we we actually couldn't run our tanks. 
which would be realistic and cool. Right. Stay over there, if you would. No, we're not going to be able to make him stay over there. Um, we can get... No, one more tank in there once this guy arrives. Yeah, so we'll do that once he moves. But without the air cover, they're just so slow. It's They're almost impossibly slow. Um, let's try just intercepting a bit to at least reduce their CAS impact. Just throw infantry lives at them to try and slow them down. But no, I mean, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> As soon as we're attacking into forest rather than the plains, the tanks are just trash. Trying to push through the odd tens over here and completely failing. Um, we need the air cover or you just can't do it. So, that said, let's pull back and try and hold a line. So, infantry, this is the line that you must not allow to break under any circumstances. And we do it half and half though, because these are the bad infantry. It's possible we shouldn't have the bad infantry on the front, because they take up supply that could be used by 40 wits. They take up reinforcement that could be used by 40 wits. So let's leave them on their line back here. Oh, don't we already have other ones there? Yeah. So let's put you guys. Wait, what trait can you be assigned? Carl? Carl, you hear some good ones. Ah, uh, no. And you? Any? Doesn't look like it. No. Um, I guess we have them one line behind like this and then we can move them in to weak spots and some of the tanks will remain on the front um, but obviously we're going to need some of them where are the others right we're on two front lines here and then where are these ones also here okay uh is that is that a tank fallback line i see in there i think it is all right let's delete these oops i deleted the uh this one my bad there we go. If Luxembourg suddenly joins this war, I'm going to be real mad. <laughs> we do have a CB on them. Oh, no, we don't. We will once. Wait, what? Oh, no, that's right. We did Wezerabung, not, uh, not, not bypass the Maginot. So, tanks. Are all 20 of you here? Looks like some of you are going over here. Yeah. The, uh, the plan for pushing against the Soviets is fairly simple. Um, they can't stop our tanks. They don't have enough planes. They're not, uh, or at least they're not deploying enough planes, and they don't have the air bases to really fully deploy against us. I think we'll be able to crush them with a, a sequence of pockets. It'll be a, a matter of not small pockets, but not massive pockets either. You know, we're pushing to an area, and we'll just grab all the local people, grab the local troops grab them here and then just annihilate them and then do it repeat 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 basically until the soviet army is devastated and if we could take all of the soviet union it would give us such an oil reserve pushing across these this mountainous terrain without the supply was yeah it was i don't think it was necessarily a terrible plan because in a normal situation we would have been able to do it if we hadn't been in this max buffed you know crazy late situation so i don't really <laughs> what i'm saying is i don't blame myself <laughs> But uh, given the situation we were in, the other thing we need to do is close the economy, I think, because our steel production is is so bad. Is there, there's not really easily accessible steel in the Soviet Union, but once we push them all the way back, the steel mills in here will be ours. All right, so which tanks will we leave? How many tanks will we leave? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven provinces on the front line. That seems like a fairly reasonable number to me. It's about half our tanks remaining deployed on the Western Front. Do, 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 do. I think we will try and do it on uh, the same line as the others. Can we easily select like, non-selected units? I don't think you can, so let's just do this. You guys are going to start up here. And the great thing about the Soviet Front is we don't need the tanks to defend. Um, or to counter-attack in order to accomplish a defense. Which means we can use them purely for going after those pockets. I think the, the, the 20 wits need to be taken off this front. They're just not good enough. And the reinforcement rate problem is a big one. We do need to try and make this withdrawal an ordered one. So that uh, we don't have problems with... 
the, uh, the supply, for example, meaning that no one moves to fill the front until the other people have left. If we can discourage attacks on this front, that's the best, because the, you know, the easiest attack to win is one your enemy never launches. Um, sorry, easiest defense to win is one against which there is no attack. Let's get land forts. So, we don't want them to attack us. Uh, previously, the strategy behind having slightly lower forts was A, we only had time to build slightly lower forts in some situations, but B, we don't want them to attack us here. Oh, sorry, we want them to attack us here. We do want them to attack us here. And uh, now the situation has changed. Um, now we, we desperately do not want them to attack us here because we want to be able to focus on the Soviet front. So I'm going to build all of these. We are on construction engineering, which will give them a nice boost. At some point, I'd love to get Fritz. We could also manage occupied territories and uh, be more or less gentle. I haven't really put much thought into this yet because we haven't had a very large amount of factories occupied but Belgium is a, is a there's a lot of factories in Belgium um I mean hmm I don't I, I, I'm tempted to go down to gentlest but the uh the local resources will be fairly useful Thing is, once we occupy the whole Soviet Union, our occupation cost is going to start going up. Gain underscore focus. <laughs> should look at that localization file. Mm. All right. In the next episode, I know, I know, the plans change every episode. But in the next episode, God, we haven't driven these guys out yet. It's taking a crap ton of time to get walk down there. In the next episode, we are going to begin the destruction of the Soviet Union. It is most definitely not the case that all we have to do is kick in the door and the whole rotten structure will come crashing down um to quote you know an idiot but we need to uh we definitely will you know start getting problems as soon as we're fighting them in their core territory what does that mean it means we need to encircle them in non-core territory it's quite simple they don't get cores on the latvian area um so we can we can fight them, sorry, the Latvian area, the Baltic area, Latvian, Estonian, and Lithuanian area. So we can do lots of encircles, encirclements with not too much fight back in this whole region. We must make full advantage of that. Okay, but until the next time, thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>